Okay, let's talk about finding the volume of a sphere. And we're going to use this particular sphere, this example problem, to um, teach these concepts. But, um, you know, a sphere, which obviously is a circle, it's a ball, right? It's not just a circle uh, or a ball. It's, well, yeah, we want to think of it as a ball, right? Something like a bowling ball or a basketball. That's uh, the concept of a sphere, if you weren't uh, already familiar with what a sphere is. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, obviously uh, show you how to solve this problem. And we're going to look at this problem in another way. Uh, we're going to uh, basically rearrange the information in this problem to make it a little bit more challenging. So you want to stick around here um, if you're studying uh, area, surface area, and volume of basic figures, because what I'm going to be talking about uh, goes beyond just the volume of a sphere. But obviously, we're going to solve this problem in just a second. But first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math, Muscle Middle and High School math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online uh, math help programs there is, all video-based. Uh, so whether you need to take a full math course or you need assistance in your current math course, my program can help you. I have uh, complete, full, comprehensive video-based lessons, much more than what I do on YouTube, and I teach you how to solve the most common problems in mathematics at the middle and high school level. Um, so I literally have thousands of problems, all video-based, uh, and I have uh, more additional things. But I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of the uh, this particular video. I'll let you be the judge of it if you're interested. Now, one thing that you have to be doing uh, if you're a math student, and I assume that you are if you're watching this video, is you got to be taking outstanding notes, okay? Uh, over decades of teaching math, one thing is apparent to me, those students with the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. If you have no math notes, sloppy math notes, inconsistent math notes, you want to improve that, okay? Or if you're just learning math for whatever reason, you have to take math notes, okay? And uh, not just any old math notes, great math notes. So work on uh, improving your notes if they're not where they need to be. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes. Uh, those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link to those in the description of this video if you want to check that out as well. Okay, so let's get into the volume of a sphere. So we talked about this. This would be like a basketball you know, any kind of ball that we can kind of hold in our hand, right? So we're talking about volume, but we want to make sure that we don't confuse area and surface area, okay, and volume, okay? So if you're studying um, or interested in how to find the volume of a sphere, okay, you might also be interested in finding the surface area of a sphere or the area of a circle okay these are different these are uh, each one of these requires a different formula right? and this is the same as let's say the area of a rectangle or the surface area of uh, let's say a box like a shoe box okay or a the volume of a shoe box okay so the concepts are different remember volume we're going to, uh, the units of measure, this is very important, or it's going to be in units cubed, okay? And surface area and area, it's going to be in units squared. So um, if you watch some of my other videos on area and surface area and volume, I stress this because uh, students just think it's, well, it's a little trivial that, you know, I don't really have to pay attention to the units of measure. Yes, you absolutely have to, okay? Another thing you have to be very careful with is all these formulas. Okay, we, we, there's so many formulas for area, surface area, and volume of basic figures. So we have circles, we have uh, little cube things, we can have cylinders, okay? So surface area of a cylinder, that uh, formula is different than the volume of cylinder, okay? Uh, we can have triangles, we can have uh, pyramids, okay? You gotta get the idea. So when you start adding up all these different formulas, it can get confusing. Right? And just over the years, you know, uh, we're going to be focusing on the volume of sphere, but sometimes a student will break out of different formula and they'll, you know, uh, get confused. So don't use your memory uh, right now in terms of, um, oh, I think this is the right formula to do this particular problem. No, reference your what, 
your notes, okay? Because I know you have outstanding, fantastic notes so you can just reference. That's the whole idea of taking notes, right? You want to look, make sure you got the right formula for the right situation, understand what you're trying to do, and then work the problem, okay? All right, so let's get into this problem here. All right, so here we go. This is uh, our sphere, and you can see it has a radius of three inches, and we're trying to find the volume, and this is the formula we need to use. So the volume of sphere is equal to four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed, All right? So you need to know the formula. If you don't know the formula, we won't be able to do the problem, okay? So that's number one. Number two, is we need to uh, correctly apply the formula. So here it's pretty direct, right? Our radius is three inches uh, in this particular sphere. So we're just gonna plug in right here for the formula three, okay, for our radius. So uh, we'll go ahead and just simplify this. So the volume is gonna be four thirds times pi times um, three cubed. Now, one thing that, of course, three cubed is 27, right? So that's the correct answer. but I've seen this over and over again. So let's say I have two times three cubed, okay? And, I, and if you watch my other videos, I say the importance of when you're replacing a variable with the value to put that in parentheses because I've seen students do this so many times. So let's say I'm trying to calculate two times three cubed. I've seen students go two times three is six and then I'll take that and I'll cube it. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, that says follow the proper order of operations. So remember, Follow your basic math here. You got to do powers before you do multiplication. So we got three cubed is three times three, three, three times three times three. That's 27. Okay, so we're just walking through this problem. So 27 times pi, uh, we can approximate that as 3.14. Um, I'll talk about that in a second. Times four thirds. So three goes into 27. Uh, just a little cross cancellation. That's nine. So that's four times pi times nine. And then, of course, 4 times 9 is going to be 36. So 36 pi, okay, is our number here. But 36 pi, what? Well, our units of measure is inches, so it's inches cubed. So this here would be considered an exact answer, okay? Anytime you use the pi symbol, okay, and we don't replace that with a decimal estimate, we would consider this an exact answer. So if your teacher is saying find the exact volume, this would be the exact vo uh, volume. Now, we could just say, hmm, let's kind of give uh, more of a feel for this answer, and let's uh, replace this pi uh, with the estimate of 3.14. Okay, of course, this goes on and on and on. The more digits we use, the more accurate our answer will be. So 36 pi is approximately, notice these little symbols, they're not just kind of like, you know, you know, I'm just not kind of writing things down that don't mean something. Everything in math means something. Notice this is equal to, this is approximately. These little squiggly lines like this means approximately. So 36 pi is approximately 113.04 okay, inches cubed, right? All right, so that's uh, the volume of this uh, particular sphere. And that uh, takes care of this problem. But let's say our problem was this. This becomes more interesting. Now, what if I kind of turn this around? Now, same information, okay? This is our same sphere. We already know that the volume is 113.04 inches cubed. So, hmm, let's go like, hey, this is the same problem. And remember, this problem, the radius was equal to three, okay? So what if I phrase the problem this way, okay? I said, I have a sphere and its volume is 113.04 inches cubed. What is the radius? Hmm, how do we do this? Well, of course, you're gonna to have to use the formula and you're gonna to have to be really good with your algebra. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example problem like so. All right, so the volume we know is 113.04 inches cubed. So I'm gonna put replace this V with the, with the volume. So I have 113.04 is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. Remember, I'm trying to solve for r. Okay, that's an unknown. I don't have that information. That's what I'm trying to solve for. So now, best way to handle an, uh, an equation like this is to get rid of this denominator. I want to deal with fractions. So if I multiply the entire equation by 3, I can get rid of that uh, little fraction there. So that would be 3 times 113 uh, 
3 times 113.04, that gives me 339.12. Right? I'm just distributing here. 3 times 4 thirds. Okay, the 3's cross cancel. That leaves me with 4 times pi r cubed. Okay, so that's just an easier way to write this problem. So now I've got to solve for r cubed. Uh, so how do I do that? Well, I need to divide both sides of the equation by this 4 pi. Okay. So that's what I'm doing right here. So r cubed will be equal to 113, uh, I'm sorry, 339.12 divided by 4 pi, okay? Now pi, again, that's an exact uh, value. So let's go ahead and, and uh, use uh, an estimate for pi, 3.14. So this is 339.12 divided by 4 times 3.14. And when we do this math, we get 27. Okay, wow, that's pretty cool. So when you go into your calculator, you'll get uh, 27. So R cubed, we did all this number crunching, turns out to be equal to 27, okay? So R cubed, that's our radius cubed, is equal to 27. Now, here, uh, when you're faced with a, uh, uh, you don't have a square root like this. If I had R squared is equal to 27, I could just simply take uh, and take the square root of both sides, so r would be equal to the square root of 27, but I have a cubic situation here, okay? So you have to notice a little bit more about rational exponents uh, or these type of things, okay? But this is let's just make this problem easy on ourselves. Hopefully you're just like, oh, 27, that's the same as uh, 3 cubed, so these here have the same exponents, so r must be equal to 3, okay? And that, in fact, was what our original problem was. We already knew that to be the case because this is the same problem in reverse. Okay, So when you're dealing with volume of sphere problems, you can kind of get both varieties. Okay, You can be, get, be uh, given the volume, and then they might be asking for the radius, or they might give you the volume, and they might ask for the surface area. So you still have to get the radius and do some other calculations, all kinds of crazy good stuff. I tell you, math is just so much fun. There's just so much you can do with all these formulas and all these concepts. But um, anyways, again, if you don't have your notes and all these formulas organized, then you're going to just be very, very confused. All right? So... Uh, got to take great math notes, and you got to practice this stuff. Just watching me do math is not enough. It's watching math is not the same as learning math and retaining math. Okay, got to practice this stuff. Okay, so if in some ways this video helped you out, I would certainly appreciate you smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Um, been on YouTube for a long time, over 10 years at the point of this video. I already have hundreds and hundreds of math videos uh, organized on my uh, channel in various playlists, pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, more advanced math, etc. So all those videos are there for you, and I'm producing uh, videos all the time, okay? But if you really want to check out my best resources, just follow the links in the description of this video. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.